Jesus Christ spoke in tongues. Many today have a false Jesus. A false Jesus Christ, what the Bible warned about. There's two Jesus Christs. One is God and one is the God of this world. Many have the false Jesus Christ. Now Jesus Christ spoke in tongues. And I'm going to show you this in the book of Matthew, verse 27, down straight to verse 46. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama shabachini. This is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Now listen, no man knew what he was saying because he spoke in tongues. Let's drop to the next verse. Some of them stood there when they heard that, said, This man calleth for Elias. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on the reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, so this is all the other people, and there were Gentiles and all sorts there, and Jews, okay? Let, let him be. Let us see whether Elias will come to save him. So none of them could interpret what Jesus spoke, because he spoke in tongues, but the Bible interpreted it, to say that, My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Now there were some there that said, This man cries for Elijah. And then the rest of them said, Let's see if Elijah comes. And when we go to the book of Acts, we see that Gentiles were gathered there, and we see that nations were gathered there, and the Jews were gathered there, all languages, and none of them knew what Jesus said. Now we go to Revelation chapter 1, and John says that Jesus' voice is as the sound of many waters. Now some take this literal to mean that Jesus' voice is going to sound like a load of rushing water, but that's not the case, as we see... Also in Revelation, the great whore that sits upon many waters, yet again it's interpreted as these waters what thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are multitudes, nations, languages, and tongues. Jesus' voice is as the sound of many languages. This is why Jesus said in the book of Matthew, He that believeth on me, as the scripture have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Those living waters are the same as what John heard in Revelation chapter 1, that Jesus' voice is the sound of many waters, okay? Many rivers, many waters. Jesus spoke in tongues on the cross. Nobody could interpret it. They thought it was Elijah, and the rest of them said, let's see if Elijah will come and save him. Now, Jesus' voice is as the sound of many waters, which is many languages, this is why when Christ is in us and we're filled with the Holy Ghost, which is the Spirit of Christ, that living waters will flow out of our belly, which is also speaking in tongues, as we see in the book of Acts, chapter 2, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in the house, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a mushy, rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like unto as fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they all began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. So when they were filled, they had rivers of living water coming out of their belly. This is because Jesus Christ was in them, the hope of glory, and he has the voice, the sound of many waters. You can't interpret it with your carnal mind. Jesus Christ spoke in tongues. So when we get born again and have Christ in us, we will speak in tongues. Many are deceived about being born again. They think if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that you're born again. But Jesus already said how it is to be born again. You must be born of water and of the Spirit. Just like Colossians 2 says, buried with him in baptism, wherein you're also risen with him through the faith of the operation of God. So it's God's faith and his operation that when you're baptized in water, as Jesus said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. That is what Paul talked about in Titus, the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Ghost. So we need to be washed, regenerated. That's when we're baptized by faith, God's faith and his operation. Okay, then we're dead with Christ then we're raised in newness of life, and then filled with the Holy Ghost. This is what Jesus meant in John 3. Okay, he said, 
you must be born again. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. He said that you must be born of the water and of the spirit. That's being born regenerated through baptism, and then born of the spirit, which is the Holy Ghost baptism. Jesus told us how it is to be born again. This is what happened to them when the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were born again. Jesus said that the wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof. So there's a sound, but you can't not tell whether it cometh and whether it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. So the Spirit blows where it will, and you don't know where it comes and you don't know where it goes, but you hear the sound. This is why there was a sound of a mighty rushing wind in when the day of Pentecost was fully come. There was a sound of a mighty rushing wind, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in tongues. That's what it is to be born again. Believe won't get you anywhere. Confession with mouth won't get you anywhere. Believe in heart won't get you anywhere. We are to obey God's word. We are to follow him in the regeneration. For this is why Jesus said that many are cold. And how are we cold? Well, Paul said how we're called in Thessalonians. He said, whereunto he called you by our gospel. So we're called by the gospel, but it doesn't stop there. We have to be chosen. We have to go on to obey Jesus' commands, to be baptized, to be born again, to obey him. Why call me Lord, Lord, and do not what I say? So we have to obey Jesus Christ. We have to be baptized of the water and baptized of the Spirit to enter into the kingdom. Many are against this. Many have been called by the gospel, but they're not doing what Jesus said to ask, seek, and knock, to ask the Heavenly Father for the Holy Ghost. They've stopped at just believing the gospel, but they need to obey the gospel. The gospel is that Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again the third day. Now how do we obey it? Well, we die, and then we're buried with him in baptism, then we're risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who have raised him from the dead. Many haven't got Christ in them. They think that they received the Holy Ghost at the moment they believed the gospel. This is not what happened to them in the book of Acts, and you can clearly see in Apostle Paul's letters. Know ye not that so many of us were baptized, were baptized into his death? For by one spirit are we all baptized into his death. See, it is a spiritual baptism. The water doesn't save you. It's a spiritual baptism when we're baptized in the water by our faith, and God sees that, and by his faith, there's an operation where we're buried with him. By one spirit, we're baptized into him. Then by God's operation, we're risen with him. So many are deceived today. Even Paul was told by Ananias, Why tarriest thou? Arise, be baptized, washing away thy sins. Peter also said, the like figure unto whereunto baptism doth now also save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but an answer of a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You see, baptism puts away the filth of the flesh. This is what Paul done when he was told to arise, be baptized, washing away thy sins. The gospel calls us. Now we're to obey it. Many are not obeying it. Many are under delusion. Many reject the doctrine of Christ. And many have a false Jesus. What I'm telling you is true. To be born again, to be born of the Spirit. Jesus said that there's a sound. It's like wind. Well, this is what happened to them on the day of Pentecost when they were born again and filled with the Holy Ghost. There was a rushing, mighty sound of the wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. You're not born again when you just believe the gospel. You need to obey the gospel. Jesus said that we need to follow him in the regeneration. It's not a one-time thing. Believe is not the same as obey. According to Paul in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, When the Lord Jesus Christ shall be revealed from heaven in flame and fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Peter also said, um, that time is come, that judgment must begin in the house of God. And if it first begin with us, what shall the end of those be that obey not the gospel of God? 
So we're to obey the gospel. And we obey the gospel by dying with Christ, by being buried with Christ, and being raised in newness of life with Christ. We need to be born of water and of the Spirit. It's not the water that washes our sins away. Revelation chapter 1 says that he have washed us from our sins in his own blood. But what that water does, the baptism, when Jesus said that we must be baptized to be saved, that, that is the operation of the faith of God. That when we're baptized, and we've, we're rep we've repented, believe, and we're being baptized, that there's faith in God's side, and it's an operation of God. He buries us with Christ, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Many say that you don't need to be baptized to be saved. All you need to do is believe. Faith alone is a devil's doctrine. Many are called, few are chosen. Many are just believing, few are obeying. God bless all.